I did not Hi, think TV. we were going to sit on the stage and cry. Oh my God. Hello? Hello? Kaka? out there? Look up here! Look up here! Hi, TV. <laughs> this female squeal. I love it. Hi! Hi! Everybody, it's Katie! Why? I'm footsie. Kitten heel? Is that what they call it? it uh, it's uh, called a heel for a working matriarch. <laughs> My like skin to skin. Skin to skin right now. It's been so long Hi, since I've had you. Hi, welcome to I love it welcome so much. Vegas. We love your set. The things I've done in Vegas. There are things I've done here I would never <laughs> dare. And I can't believe I got away with that. Well, that was before cameras all over everywhere. I'll just say that for my first marriage, Rihanna threw my bachelorette party here in Vegas. So that's just gonna give you a context clue. And what, what <laughs> year was that? I was 24. Was like and were there years. cameras around? Uh, I know, not even on our phones. We still like had sidekicks. Yes. I, think. <laughs> I want to talk to you about some things that I discovered there's a Vegas legacy and history in your life. Yeah, there's like some family connections here, but it's all very serendipitous, synchronicity, almost like I'm living in a simulation. It's so strange because my aunt um, was a top show girl and then my grandma was a seamstress for that show. And my dad grew up here, met my mom here who was like a freelance reporter. Um, they met at a church service that was being held under a big outside tent that then was being led by my aunt who used to be the ex showgirl. My parents got married here, yes. but the funny thing is is that all that happened at a hotel called the Stardust, which is what this hotel is built on basically because they had to demolish the Stardust Hotel and then they rebuilt the Resorts World. So it's so, so interesting that like out of the whole strip, out of all the hotels, like I would be kind of performing and putting this show on on the same grounds that my family DNA has worked on 40, 50, 60 years ago. So like meant to be, it's like, it's definitely, it's definitely one of those signs and symbols moments. Something about your grandmother, I found out a detail and will you tell me if it's true or not, that when she was making clothing for the showgirls and tailoring and doing her thing that she would find ways inventive ways to create little pockets even in those tiny thongs um, to store women's wedding rings so they wouldn't get stolen in the 70s I mean it was like it was Vegas was run by mafia in the 70s you know so my grandma was the seamstress and there there weren't it was topless showgirls so they didn't really have to make tops so they just wore g-strings and in that G-string would With house a tiny pocket. the wedding ring. The wedding ring. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, and your mom and dad got married here. Yes. Do you know the chapel that they, they got married they at? Did get, they get married at a house? Like no, where? they got married. It's demolished now. It was like a, a viewing platform. It was like a needle. Like, like the stratosphere. Like the stratosphere. But that different. But, um, so they got married there. You're engaged. I'm engaged. Oh, yeah. For a, a, like a while, there was a plan for a wedding, then pandemic, then... Then still, I mean, there's still a plan, but the, the location <laughs> is challenging. Well, your parents got married in Vegas. I know, but I love a big celebration. I'm all about like big, fun, exotic, great celebrations. So hopefully soon. I was so excited to become a mom. It was the one thing I knew I wasn't going to screw up. I'll like crash burn, figure it all out, fail. Because with all of, we were reading the pregnancy book and it was like, your baby is the size of an olive. And that was it. That was oh the name. Oh my gosh, really? But thank God it wasn't papaya, yeah? Exactly. Or broccoli or oh, banana. Yeah. <laughs> Although I really... Courgette. Courgette. I do love a courgette. And I know that I won't be a perfect parent because there's no such thing. But I was like, I really want to have my stuff together as much as possible before I embark on having kids. Did you have a perception of what that journey would be for you? Yeah, I went and do, did so much work before it because I was nervous about just some, some stuff I had from my past. And I wanted to kind of clear that. Um, I wanted to like change all the energy and um, Orlando and I were very intentional on having Daisy where we had decided there was no accident, you know, it was time and... Daisy is the happiest name. 
It yeah. actually has a smile in it, like Skippy. Yeah. And well, Daisy. Skippy. Yeah. And Skippy is a little bit more like for pets, but and boys and peanut butter, but yeah. <laughs> but I mean, there's a reason since I was 13 that my very favorite word, one of my favorite words in the English language, is Daisy. Yeah. It is. The flower, the sound of it. It she has. She embodies it, and it's the best. It's my. It's my favorite. Thing I've ever done, the best job, most fulfilling, the most love. Like, I've always had like a like a um, uh, am I enough thing hang up, you know? Like, am, will I be enough, or did I, you know, just get lucky, or you know, I work so hard sometimes to like prove uh, am I enough, and it's and it comes from a lot of like childhood stuff, and uh, I've always had a challenging time with love and relationships and. Um, you know, maybe not being attracted to the right kind of people sometimes. And I wanted to be attracted to someone that was kind and consistent and showed up for me. And so um, I did all the work to do that. And um, it, it's, you know, it's paid off. I love my whole life to learn and grow yeah. and pocket everything I've learned. And when, like, literally the universe as well as the nurse informed me that I was having girls my entire existence made sense for me did you feel like a ping when you found out you were having a girl yeah I mean I never said what I wanted out loud because I was just gonna leave it up to the stars but you know inside there was a little prayer because I I just I, I love I love women. I love strong women. I know that I'm going to be raising a strong woman. I know all the things that maybe I didn't get or needed, I can give. And so I can kind of like do a little bit of a redo. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Sometimes I think like I'm just too much. I'm just too much. How do you be so much without feeling like you're too much? Balance. I think obviously there's an onstage persona and I, and I save a lot of that energy for it being on stage and I dial it up. I really love this show that I put on. It's my favorite show. It's bringing the most joy. Um, I'll probably go and make a, another record soon and write it and tour the world after this, which will be so great. But I'm pretty like even off stage. I'm, I'm more like businesswoman. I'm more, I don't talk a lot off stage. Really? No. I'm very kind of like a, an observer. I'm an observer and yeah, I like, I really s save my energy for when I have to go and turn it on because when I turn it on, it's up to 11 girl.